and, and it just, you know, made so much sense to me that the devil would try to come after our spiritual immune system in order to weaken us spiritually, right? So I was talking on Sunday about how David was this amazing uh, uh, hero of the faith, how, how many great decisions that he made. As, as a young man, he ran into the battle, and yet, you know what it is, like, as you walk through life, if you don't deal with your stuff, the enemy has a way of finding that crack in the hedge. So he went through 25 chapters from 1 Samuel 17 all the way to 2 Samuel 11 and had an unbelievable record of being constrained against taking matters into his own hand until he walked out on that roof. And it said at the time when the king should be at war, he stayed behind. And that's what we have to be careful. How is our immune system doing? And I'm telling you, the people around you can be a big help in this. You know, they can give you a booster shot. They can come up and give you the word of God. They can give you a prophetic word. They can say, you know what, I'm praying for you. How can I pray for you? Don't you love when people ask, instead of just saying what they need from you, how can I pray for you? What's going on in your life? How can I pray for you? And, and especially when they know you well enough to know that you're not being honest with them. How valuable is that? Really honor, really valuable. Because you're like, oh no, everything's good. <laughs> and you're like, no, I know you. We've been together a long time, man. Don't try to, don't try to kid me. I know you need something. Help me out. Well, I didn't want to bring, I don't want to bring you down with my stuff. Look, that's what we hear. That's what we're here for. That's what family does. We support one another. Amen. Gotta wake you guys up. What happened? So this is the last verse I said on Sunday, Romans 5 in the Phillips translation, verse 10, if while we were his enemies, Christ reconciled us to God by dying for us, surely, can you say surely? Surely, now that we are reconciled, we may be perfectly certain of our salvation through his living in us. So if his dying for us secured our salvation, how much more can we be perfectly certain that we have our salvation with him living in us? My body is the temple. He chose to, to dwell here. He can't abide in an unholy temple, but we, we repent. We come back to him and we say, Lord, forgive me like David did in Psalm 51, right? Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. That's the beauty of this growth cycle that we're in. Nobody gets a perfect score on every test, and, and we shouldn't be legalistic about it, but we should be doing whatever we can to secure our immune system, our spiritual immune system. And it's not a list of 10 things to do this and 10 things to do that. We, we have a tendency, I, I think, as human beings to like to do lists because we can kind of check our brain at the door a little bit. But the Holy Spirit is there to help continue to prompt us not to fall into ruts. Hebrews 11, this is uh, also in the Phillips, I believe, it, is that where I took it from? It says, now faith means putting our, say it, full, a little louder, full confidence in the things that we hope for. And be, means being certain of the things we cannot see. So look at these, the ones that are highlighted, perfectly certain of his living in us and full confidence and being certain. Those are good words for faith. It means I'm not like maybe, I'm not wishy-washy, I'm not lukewarm about it. I have to be fully persuaded. That's how Paul said it. I want to be fully persuaded, not partially. And then I've just found in life that I can say something, but my actions don't always match what, what I'm saying of what I believe. That's probably partly what happened to David. There was, there was a crack in his hedge that he hadn't dealt with. There's a long history in David's family. If you think about it, I won't go too deep, but why wasn't he called when his father knew that Samuel came into town? Why wasn't David called? Why were the other sons called and not David? Many scholars think it's because he was an illegitimate child, that he wasn't in, in the same line as his brothers. I can't prove it, but there, you know, people like Dutch Sheets, who I really respect, has, has said that, that that's a real possibility. Now think about how that could have impacted him up on that roof. How could it have impacted him on having so many wives? The Bible says, a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his? Thank you. Singular. One is enough. <laughs> right? Wives? Woo! And then if David didn't take care of his issue, 
What does Solomon get? You sow the wind, you reap 700 concubines and 300 wives. Woo! Can't even remember all their names. Well, he was the smartest guy in the world, except on that topic. What happened? All, all of this brilliance, he, he used the secular thinking to say, you know what, if we, if I marry into these other tribes, they won't want to go to war with us. But you're thinking in the natural, Solomon. You forgot about the spiritual. You opened up the whole country to all of this idolatry to become one. Hmm. That's a bunch of lessons in there, isn't it? I, I just want to go through this quickly because, you know, for the first 30, roughly, verses in Hebrews 11, we call it the Hall of Faith. We hear specifically about how each individual, Moses, Abraham, you know, so many different people. But then the author, I think it could be Paul. Some people don't agree, but whoever it was, was brilliant. This book is amazing. It says, what other example shall I give? There's simply not time to continue by telling the stories of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through their faith. Can you say that with me? Through their faith. Not through their intellect. Not through where they graduated college. Not by what kind of car they drove or how much money they had. No. Through their faith. They were fully persuaded. Perfectly certain that God was going to come through. And I don't always get there. Like, I'm just confessing that to you. That's part of my problem, is that I think I believe it until the rubber meets the road. And then I realize I wasn't quite where I thought I was. Now, that's not condemning or shaming. It's just saying, what is in there in me that's stopping me from believing it? It's a weakness in my spiritual immune system. So the immunology of spiritual warfare is the devil uses doubt and unbelief to get us to lose power. And we know that unbelief is very, very powerful because it stops people from getting where they need to go. It says it multiple verses in the Bible. I won't quote them all now, but it says, Through their faith, these men conquered kingdoms, ruled in justice, proved the truth of God's promises. They shut the mouth of lions. They quenched the furious blaze of fire. They escaped from death itself. They became strong men and mighty warriors. They routed whole armies of foreigners. Some returned to their women from certain death. Others were tortured, refusing to be ransomed because they held to the promise of a more honorable resurrection in the world to come. There was nothing this world could offer them that could have been better if, than... They said, you know, if you renounce your faith, we'll give you all of this. They said, you know what? No way. There's nothing that you have. I am perfectly certain that sticking to the Lord is the way to go. And if you take my life, it will just be the end of this natural life, but the beginning of my supernatural life forever with God. And if we could walk in that kind of certainty, many of the immune system issues of our lives, like being distracted or spending too much time on social media or whatever particular thing it could be, our immune system will strengthen. And then when that thing tries to come back, the immune system just kills it. See, it's not like medicine. I think I, I made that distinction a few weeks ago when I showed you that picture. The little girl was nine years old. This is in my son's lab before he got there. But he had heard about this little girl at the time. So it's now been 10 years since she had the procedure done. She was given two weeks to live. She was nine years old and given two weeks to live. So the parents thought, you know what? If you have something that, that might work, we really don't have much to lose here because it's not looking good. So they did this procedure on her that had never been done before, and it was using the HIV virus. They reprogrammed it so that it would only kill the cancer and not kill the patient. <laughs> Who would think to do that? That's a God download right there. So 10 years later, she hasn't had chemo. She hasn't had radiation. She hasn't had to fill a script. Nothing, because her immune system is killing it. You don't need outside help when you've got it on your own. See, isn't that brilliant? That if we would just keep our spiritual condition, that Trisha talks about rebuilding our altars, before the Lord and recognizing how serious our spiritual condition is for the quality of the decisions that we make.
Because that quality of decision that David made, all of those 25 chapters of great decisions started the downfall when he stayed on that roof too long and kept looking at that woman. And then just like it says in James, that idea conceived and it gave birth and birth gave, gave birth to death. Like even you could, you could look at it clearly, how it drops down from Solomon to then Manasseh. Finally, God says, you know what? There's so much sin in Jerusalem. I'm going to take Jerusalem like a man has a plate, and I'm going to wipe it clean. I can turn it upside down. Now, we're not in that dispensation anymore. But how much time do you have left? Like, I don't know. Maybe you're a baby. There's a baby on the back row. I hope she lives to be 100. But 100 years compared to eternity is not that long. What are you going on, John? 86? 86, looking good. Right? Look at his skin. He has no wrinkles. What's going on? I'm jealous. Not allowed to be jealous, but the guy's amazing. Well, why not live at the highest spiritual quality that we can? And why not recognize the enemy has a plan every day, just like God has a plan every day? And he wants to weaken you with things that don't look like that big of a deal. But they are, because we're the temple. Right? All right, so I'll just keep going. Others were tortured, refusing to be ransomed because they held to the promise of a more honorable resurrection in the world to come. Love that wording. Others were exposed to the test of public mockery and flogging and to the torture of being left bound in prison. They were killed by stoning. They were killed by being sawn in two. They were tempted by specious promises of release and then were killed with the sword. Many became refugees with nothing but sheepskins or goatskins to cover them. They lost everything. They were spurned and ill-treated by a world that was too evil to see their worth. Hmm. They lived as vagrants in the desert or on the mountains or in caves or holes in the ground. All these won a glowing testimony to their faith. And in, in the New King James, it says the world was not worthy to receive them. So I just want to give a little reality check because I hear people that are kind of caught up in the end times, and I know that's a biblical topic. I get it. But they, they say things like, things have never been this bad before. Please just reread that chapter 11, what all these people just had to go through. Read what the Romans did to the Christians. You go into a, a coliseum, and the place is filled, waiting to see you eaten by a lion. And the people were singing worship songs on the way in. Because they knew where they were going. They knew there was a better resurrection, and we've lost that. See what happens? We've lost that because the enemy, the biggest threat of Caesar was death. So as soon as they knew there was a better resurrection, he lost his biggest weapon. <laughs> and that's what the devil still tries to do. And again, I, I would never mock anybody about COVID reaction because we've all had such difficult situations that we've had to face. You shouldn't do that. You should recognize every person as, as an individual that has to make their own decisions. And you don't have all the right answers. So just because you have a position on it, but, but if we say that our immunology matters when it comes to spiritual warfare, the more word you have in you, the more you're praying in the spirit, the more you're spending time worshiping. Naturally, you know, I've been doing it for 40 years now. So the worship music to me is this huge medicine Going over and over, even when I'm practicing, it's not like work because it's scripture that's coming through my, my spirit and my mind. And that's also blocking out anything else that could be trying to come in. I have a lot of control over the condition of my spiritual immune system. And so do you. And in Hebrews, it calls it besetting sins. So something that might not bother me, I don't have a problem with, I can't say to you, well, I don't have a problem. That, why is that such a hard time for you? Because you're very different. Right? And, and everybody's going to have a different DNA and a different makeup and also a different spiritual condition. Look at all these want a glowing testimony to their faith, to their faith. Faith is the substance of things that you hope for, the evidence that you believe something even though you can't see it yet. And that's what we need. That's always what we needed. We really need it now because the, the things that we used to be able to count on that you never even had to try to defend, why would it be right to be married? <laughs> okay, how about covenant? How about 
You want to be able to trust the person you're with. You want to stand up in front of a group of people and tell everybody in the audience that you know, your friends and family, this is the one I'm choosing for better or for worse in sickness and in health till death do us part and what God has put together that no man pull asunder. That's a public declaration in front of everybody you know and love that this is the one I'm going to be with. And divorce is not a, a word in our vocabulary. That's, that's a good immune system. I recognize not everybody was taught that. And I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just saying there is something we could shoot for. And the Lord has set that for us. And the culture continually tries to tear that all down and say, nope, there's no, there's no such thing as absolutes. That's just your truth. <laughs> he is the way, the truth, and the life. They should be able to see that in us. Amen? I, lo I love this. So David is in another part of his life, as he's on the run from Saul, you remember he goes into the enemy's camp because he knows he can't stay in Jerusalem. He's on the run for something in his mind gets confused and he thinks, I'll go to the enemy's camp and I'll be safe. But as he's walking down Main Street, they're like, isn't this the guy that we sing the songs about? Like, isn't he the captain of our enemy? What's he doing here? And he realizes it and he starts acting crazy. You remember this? Scratching on the door, letting all the spittle come down his beard. Like, wow, how embarrassing. But, you know, he wasn't in his right mind. And it says, the happiness of those who trust in God. That's faith. Trust and faith are pretty much interchangeable, right? How much do you trust? A psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. Remember what the king said? I don't need another crazy guy around here. Get him out of here. I got enough crazy people. <laughs> Probably wasn't a bad strategy. <laughs> so... What song would you be singing if you just made a complete fool of yourself, spit coming down your beard, acting like you're crazy, you can't go back to Jerusalem, and you just got thrown out of the enemy's camp, and they slammed the gate behind you, where are you going to go? What, what song would you write in that moment? Here's what David says. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Like, that doesn't fit unless it's supernatural. Unless he realizes, you know what? I was chasing all the wrong answers. God's got to be the one to do this. i got to stop working in my own natural skill and realize my condition in my spirit isn't dictated by the conditions of my surroundings. I'm going to bless him at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. And then he says to everybody else around him, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. He heard me and he delivered me from all my enemies. Nope. He hadn't been delivered from his enemies yet. His enemy was still chasing him. But he wasn't afraid anymore. Big difference. He heard me and delivered me from my fears. So now I can, I can get a strategy because there's not all this noise in my mind cluttering up my brain because I'm at peace. Shalom is the absence of chaos. Peace in your spirit. Once he knew that the Lord had his back and something about this particular moment clicked it together for him, I sought the Lord, he heard me and delivered me from my fears. Can we speak that over New York? Let them seek you, Lord. Let, you, let your, their voices be heard and deliver them from all their fears, all who don't know you, and me especially as well, Lord, that you would deliver me from any time that the emotional hijacking tries to kick in. I'm not going to give in to it. They looked to him and were radiant. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out. The Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. <laughs> the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. And then you have to, you can't end it without looking at 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. Let's stand.